The Polyphaga shuttle borer is a beetle native to Southeast Asia. It's a very tiny beetle, females about 2.5 millimeters, male about 1.5 millimeters. What they do is they don't eat the wood itself, they create what we call, um, well, they create holes in the tree and we call that brooding galleries. They carry in their own food, which is a fungus, um, that they inoculate the edges of the gallery which they created. The fungus will grow there and the beetle itself with the pupae and all that, they will feed on the fungus and not the actual, which is, which is very important. There is a range of host species, but the, uh, the most important species are your box elders, English oaks, weeping willows and castor beans, they are what we call amplifier trees because they put a lot of propagule pressure into the environment, producing a lot of new beetles. This beetle was first identified in, in South Africa in 2017 in Pieter Maritzburg and it, it was clearly by, clearly by chance a master student had to look at the, uh, um, the trees in the botanical gardens and came upon a London plane tree that was infested by a uh, Bollyfaga shuttle borer. Since then it has moved on. Uh, in 2018 it was found in Neisner and 2019 the first incidence in the city of Cape Town was in Somerset West and in 2023 was the first time we found it in the southern suburbs. Since then it has moved to several new areas, Peniel being one, Constantia and a, lo a lot of um, suburbs in the southern suburbs. To identify a beetle has been infested by polyphagous shot or borer, there will be external signs. The first sign is sawdust noodles which are pushed outside of the hole because the beetle doesn't feed on the wood itself they will push out the sawdust noodles out of the hole. The second identification uh, um, sign will be um, gumming so you get different degrees of gumming, um, extensive gumming like uh, typically on your black, black wattles, then you get a gum droplet will be typical on your weeping willow trees and then in between gumming as well. The next sign will be staining. This is a very common sign. Most of the trees will have some some sort of stain so it can be very easily identified on London plains where it basically looks like the oil has been spilled around the hole. So it will be a stain on the bark. On your grey poplars as well will be a black stain. The next sign will be sugar exude, which is very common on your avocado trees. It's basically because the sugar is in high pressure inside the tree. When the beetle drills through the tree, that sugar is pushed out, creating a sugar volcano. Very important, the PSHB, the hole will be the size of a medium big pen. It will not be bigger or smaller. If the hole is bigger or smaller, you're probably not dealing with PSHB. Also, once you lift the bark underneath the, on the on the wood, the sap wood of the tree, you will get a, round, a reddish brown stain around it. That will be the fungus growing in inside the wood, and that is also a clear identification of PSHB. If you have found that there is PSHB in your tree, first of all, identify the tree as a reproductive host or non-reproductive host. Non-reproductive host, you don't have to do anything, you just keep monitoring the tree, making sure that the number of holes doesn't increase. A reproductive host, unfortunately, you have to cut down the branches that are infested, but if the beetle is in the trunk of the tree, you have to cut down the entire tree. After you've cut down the tree or trimmed away the branches, you have to chip it to 25 millimeters or smaller, that will kill 93 to 97% of the beetles inside the wood. After you've chipped them, there's three uh, um, methods to kill the remaining beetles. So the first one is solarization. So solarization, you put the beetles or the wood inside um, heavy duty plastic bags, leaving them in the sun in the summer for six weeks and the, month for, uh, in the winter for six months. Uh, make sure that there's no shades on those trees or on those bags because as soon as you, uh, there's any shade it will extend the, uh, the time it has to be in, in the sun. After the solarization that chip or that wood can be reused again. Uh, other way is, is incinerization where you burn the uh, wood in an enclosed area. Don't burn it in the open because as soon as you burn it in the open that beetle will just fly away. Or you can do composting where you can compost the, um, your chips in a low risk area, area where there's very few trees or where the trees are very far away so the beetle won't be able to reach them. Very important, after the uh, tree has been chipped or if you're gonna remove any infested waste, make sure that it is completely closed because the only way for this beetle to have moved throughout South Africa is actually by humans taking infested wood and moving it to an area that uh, doesn't have the beetle yet. So very, very, very important make sure that all wood is completely closed, put large pieces of wood in heavy duty plastic bags, not just black bags because the beetle can actually eat through that plastic, heavy duty plastic bags and make it sure it's completely closed so the beetle cannot spread it, um, move to uh, trees on along the way.